This is Kevin Butler. I'm a product engineer on Esri's analysis and geoprocessing team. In this section of the workshop, we'll explore challenges and opportunities of time series pattern analysis. We'll look at a simple method for answering one of the most basic questions about a time series. Is there trend in the data? And finally, we'll move to a type of analysis called time series clustering, where we can explore patterns across space and time. For this section of the workshop, we'll use a new analysis variable, new daily confirmed cases of COVID-19. Now, as Lauren shared with us, a space-time cube can contain multiple variables. To keep our analyses consistent, I've aggregated the new daily confirmed cases to the same four-week interval that Lauren used. We live in a very dynamic world. Many of the critical problems facing our planet are temporal in nature, wildfire, drought, unemployment, and certainly our topic for this workshop, infectious disease, all change across time. Now, many academic disciplines strive to identify and understand patterns in time series, but each of them take a slightly different approach. Speaking in very general terms, data scientists deal with tabular data and employ a wide variety of analysis and visualization techniques. Economists frequently work with time series data directly, but often focus on non-spatial modeling techniques. It's the geographer, I feel, that faces the biggest challenges when it comes to time series. Because as geographers, we look at the world through a spatial lens. We need to explore not only the patterns within a time series, but how those patterns are manifested across space. Now, many geographers use the term spatiotemporal to describe this challenging but exciting field of analysis. One of the reasons spatiotemporal analyses are challenging is data management. We need a way to integrate the tabular data that represents the time series with the spatial data in a way that supports both spatial analysis on a slice, shown in green on this diagram, and temporal analysis on a time series, shown in yellow here. Lauren has shown us that the space-time cube can help address this data management problem. For this next analysis, where we'll do trend detection, we'll be analyzing the data on a location by location basis, meaning we'll look for trends, whether or not their overall are the data values in a time series increasing or decreasing, we'll look for that at each location separately. While this diagram depicts each bin as a cube, recall that for our analysis, each bin represents a county. Now, I don't want to give the impression that the space-time cube is the only way to explore spatial patterns across time. Geographers have been incorporating time into their analyses almost since the beginning of geography itself, but I'd argue more so since the 1960s, motivated by Hagestrand's seminal work on time geography. One technique we can use to explore time is this idea of small multiples like you see on this, these maps here. This has been an effective technique. However, as the scale of data we analyze become finer and finer, these techniques become less useful. As 21st century spatial analysts, we often have a, have a good problem, the problem of too much data. Increasingly, we're asked to analyze data at finer spatial and temporal scales data that would fall in the lower left quadrant of this diagram here. And this is certainly the case for data related to the pandemic. As Lauren demonstrated, we have daily data of confirmed COVID cases and deaths for every county in the US. Let's explore how the space-time cube can help explore this large data set. Let's start with a visual exploration of trend. One of the visualization techniques uh, that the space-time cube supports is being able to explore the time series data at each location. This is accomplished through custom pop-ups. Now, as I click around the map, you can see uh, the increases and decreases in the daily new confirmed cases of COVID-19 in each county across time. Now, while these pop-ups are helpful, 
um, I can't really click on all 3,000 plus counties to explore the trends across the entire country. Fortunately, there's a straightforward statistical way to summarize the trend. When the space-time cube is created, the man kendall trend statistic is calculated at each location. Now, this statistic tells us if overall the trend is increasing or decreasing at each location, and more importantly, how confident we can be about saying whether that trend is increasing or decreasing. So this map shows trends in county population from 1970 through 2010. As expected, population is significantly trending upward, these areas in purple, throughout most of the country. However, we can see significant downward trends in the Great Plains and the Mississippi Valley, likely due to the transition from small family-based farms to large agribusiness. However, that's, that's a topic for another workshop. Next, we'll see how we can use this same technique to explore trends in the daily new confirmed COVID-19 cases. I'll do that using a geoprocessing tool, Visualize Spacetime Cube in 2D. I'll point to the cube that Lauren created for us. The analysis variable is our daily new confirmed cases. Um, I'll ask the tool to show me the trends and to produce these pop-ups and I'll give the tool a more, just the output feature class, a more descriptive name. It's now looking at trend in each one of those locations, generating those pop-ups for us, and now creating that output feature class for us to explore. Now this map is not that exciting uh, since we're uh, analyzing the pandemic uh, with almost a year's worth of data. Uh, of course, there was exponential growth in the spread of the disease and the majority of the map is trending upwards. But we can explore the map through these pop-ups and see the actual significance value, the p-value associated with each one of those trends. Trend is one of the most basic, but also most important characteristics of a time series. Now, since we analyzed an entire year of data and created our space-time cube well after the disease was widely spread across the country, the result of our trend map was sort of like saying we found sand in the Sahara. However, I suspect our map would have looked quite different earlier in the pandemic. Knowing where confirmed cases of COVID-19 are increasing or decreasing can inform mitigation or intervention strategies and guide allocation of, of scarce resources. The trend analysis is a location by location analysis, meaning it's looking at the time series of each county separately. Next, we'll use a technique called time series clustering to find groupings of counties that have similar or uh, patterns of infection across time. Time series clustering is a way to create groups of time series that have similar patterns across time. We'll explore this method graphically first to make sure that we understand it. Here, I have eight time series where the time is represented on the horizontal axis and the value of the time series is represented on the vertical axis. So the question becomes, can we combine these time series into meaningful similar groups? Well, there's really two ways that we can do that. We can group the time series together if they have similar values at the same time. In this diagram on the left, we can see that the time series fall naturally into three groups, high, medium, and low. Alternative, alternatively, we, we can group the time series together if they have similar profiles, meaning the values of the time series are increasing or decreasing at the same time, regardless of their overall value. So in this diagram on the right, time series are not grouped based on magnitude, but on whether they're increasing or decreasing at the same time. Here, the time series in the green group 
are trending downward at the same time steps. The time series in the blue groups frequently switch between increasing and decreasing, and the time series in the red group were initially decreasing, but all had a noticeable increase at the same time. So which approach you take depends on the question you're asking. In the case of our COVID-19 exploration, clustering by value helps us answer the question, which counties had similar rates of infection at the same time? Whereas clustering by profile helps us answer the question, which counties experienced increases or decreases in their infection rates at the same time? Let's see how we can apply time series clustering to our COVID-19 data. So again, I'll use a geoprocessing tool to do this. This time the time series clustering tool. I'll point to the cube that Lauren created for us. For the analysis variable, once again, I'll use the daily new confirmed cases. For the characteristic of interest, I want to look at value, not profile, and I'll arbitrarily just create three clusters. Now the tool can also help you decide on an appropriate number of clusters. I'll create those pop-ups and also create some charts to help us interpret the output. Now it's looking at all of the data, all of the time series, and seeing if it can group it into similar groups. Now I'm already seeing some interesting spatial patterns on this map, uh, but as a rule of thumb, I always like to bring up these charts, which show us the average time series uh, within each one of the clusters. That helps me name the clusters and interpret them. So uh, as we ask the tool to do, here are the three clusters. And I would describe these um, really in a very simple way. For me, the green group has an early peak with a relatively high infection rate. The red group has a later peak with a relatively moderate rate. And the blue group has not yet peaked uh, and has a relatively low infection rate. Now, that was a very quick summary and analysis. I arbitrarily chose three clusters. Um, certainly, clustering is both an art and a science. And with something, uh, you know, as complicated as the spread of COVID-19, we really do need to explore different numbers of clusters as well as clustering based on profile. However, you know, for me, even with this didactic example, I think we can see that time series clustering is a powerful technique for identifying patterns across space and time. In this section of the workshop, we explore the challenges and opportunities of time series pattern analysis and how geographers bring a valuable set of school skills to this type of analysis. We identify temporal trends in the rate of new confirmed cases of COVID-19. And finally, we created groups of counties that had similar rates of infection at the same time. I hope you find these techniques useful and that you'll consider exploring them in your next analysis.